Leg and Greg Vegan Camp, the 30th of December 2018. Nice tomato plant growing with flowers. And I was like, okay, this is growing really well. So I took a different tomato plant. I, I don't know where this plant w was, but it was completely... I was unable to take the soil. It was completely with just a little bit of root and it was like a small plant. And I planted in the middle of these flowers and now it's growing quite well up here. I'm very surprised that it even survived. So I mean, growing things together with other plants seems to be a, a good thing. And it also provides shade and there's probably a lot of micro bacteria stuff going on <laughs> inside the soil there because the plants protect the soil from the sun and then there's a lot of moisture there. The soil quality is a very important thing but also the plants that grow around the the other plants so growing different plants together can be a good thing but also some plants you cannot grow with other plants so it's like uh, you need sometimes you can do trial and error or you can just see what grows well or just read about what, what kind of plants grow well together as you can see many of these mangoes mango uh, flowers don't do very well right now Maybe they're too early, I'm not sure what's going on. And other trees have more healthy flowers. If they look like this, they're much more healthy than if they're like clumped together. Like a little clump like this is not going to produce very well. But a, a long one like that is much better. A new building. The water filter is still working. Nice temple water from the well. Temple well. Sticky rice in bamboo season, which means that we'll have fresh sticky rice harvested not long ago. And this bamboo is only fresh uh, to do this uh, in a specific period of the year, and it's now. We also put beans inside. We almost have ripe papaya daily. Sweet bamboo growing well. Creating some more chicken defense. The passion fruit dome. No more passion fruit. The fig tree. When you buy these types of I don't know how you call it, but the branch, there will usually be fruit on it, so you know it's a female producing fruit. I'm not sure if there are male and female with figs. That's the main issue of planting dates from seed. You don't know if it's a female or male. And they say that 90 or 95 or 99 percent of the seeds you plant from uh, the dates will be male which is not so nice because you want females that produce fruit. Tomato plant again like this was probably from other tomatoes that just fall down you can see there are like I think there are three oh yeah this is probably a tomato that just fell down or was thrown away and then it's just getting new plant which is quite nice like a random place where it thinks it can grow the giant granadilla dome which is the giant passion fruit and the flowers are just beautiful and they're like starting to produce here and you can see how it is it's just very very nice when they completely open they're really really nice And when we move into the dome, you can see how they develop these giant passion fruit. It's huge, I mean, it's huge. Giant, it's a giant. Yeah. We have some green peppers growing and some squash. Green pepper first. So it's looked like this and really nice. 
this squash is a zucchini and there are like different plants here they don't seem to grow that well even though they're um, they're producing they're trying to produce but when they get bigger they they seem to die so I am not sure what's uh, what's wrong with uh, either this area or they just seem to get sick or some worm eat them or something's wrong here we, we now have an asparagus field here but before the zucchini was growing here and it was really producing huge zucchini and they were growing really well well in this area so I, I don't know really what's uh, what makes the big difference fresh salad and a date palm normally you wouldn't think that this is asparagus but they actually start producing like this then it looks more like an asparagus and these are the asparagus seeds strawberries I think we need to put them into the soil soon radish coconut date palm spa area the vegetable dome died the rice husk area with compost Leg is growing radish here and other types of things. The new building made out of steel. Leg was tired of all the bugs eating the wood, so now it's steel time. The new age. First we had wood age, then stone age, then steel age. The ages change quite fast here. It's not like thousands or millions of years. It's more of like half a year. <laughs> When they have durian on the road, which is quite okay, I buy it sometimes and I save the seeds and plant it all around. Before we had a nursery of avocado here, but now they have been moved and there's only like some unsprouted avocado seeds in the soil. And a little, little papaya, two, two papayas growing here. And this papaya needs to be moved soon. Cannot grow here near the dongan. And we have started the mulching with rice straw after the rice harvest. I really don't want them to. But my primary concern with this straw is uh, that they will burn it. They just burn it. They should just leave it, like spread it out on the rice um, fields, but they don't. When they don't spread it out on the rice fields and just have a pile that they just burn, it's just much better used as mulch and compost uh, around here. This is one avocado tree growing. And it has a lot of water. This is just the bathroom and there is the shower. So there's like a lot of water. So the, the avocado grows really well with a lot of water. Together with like banana palms. Banana palms also grow really well with a lot of water. So these are the Cavendish. And they have produced like the best Cavendish we have around here. And we have these giant bamboo growing here. So if you look at the soil, it's just like stone hard and because probably there's not enough mulch in topsoil here but also the problem with this is that if you dig start digging into this soil you'll find a lot of small roots and it's all from the bamboo so like this is just the top of the iceberg this giant bamboo you you can't imagine what's going on under the soil there are like roots <laughs> everywhere and also together with with the longan trees it's like if you try to grow anything I'm, I'm like trying to grow some <laughs> these are very old pineapples and they don't really they're like really really dense so it's not good anyway but all these other plants are just not growing well here because of all the roots in the soil and not enough topsoil trying to plant some banana palms and even though they're like quite old they're like not thriving at all and they will probably maybe they will completely die here compared to other areas if we move away from the bamboo in another area well, I, this is also a completely new rice straw uh, used as a mulch the banana palms start to grow better so growing stuff nearby large bamboo is can be a challenge new compost
And as all the permaculture gurus say, there's no, no, not, not such a thing as bad soil. There's just soil that needs to be rebuilt. I believe that, but you just need to, like also, like what the people say, you need to have a lot of material, plant material. So you need plants growing and just chopping them off and just have a, a big layer of mulch. Duke Dick, hello. Okay, are you looking for Hima? I don't know where Hima is. Go and find Hima. The new storage room. We had a lot of stuff all laying all around. Now it's more tidy when it can be locked inside there. And the next project will be to get a lot of stone to put inside because right now there is like only sand in the storage. So getting a lot of stone, we need help with that. Like I had some family from Poland visiting in December and also we had two uh, cyclists from Switzerland coming by and they camped here, um, nearby here but in their tent which was pretty cool. And yeah, and now tomorrow we probably will um, receive another guest, a volunteer from Brazil. So that's exciting. We still have the uh, old storage here. The bean party is over. Here are some of the last beans this is already like dried beans this would probably be saved for planting next year and this is something that we can eat also a nice bean that we can eat small baby mango as you can see it's cloudy but the important thing on this image is these mountains in the horizon. You can still see them even though it's cloudy. And that means that the air quality is not super bad yet, but it will get much more worse. It will be super bad when they start to burn everything. I mean it was also quite bad just after the rice harvest where they also burn a lot. People don't come here in the winter period. To northern Thailand because of the the smoke season and I think it's very local here sometimes they start to burn and then you cannot breathe which is quite bad for for instance now I think somebody started to burn a fire nearby but it's very local it just like comes and then it disappears so it's not that bad as the real smoke season where you can't breathe at all during the night you're just like choking uh, <laughs> so I just want to um, say that People in Thailand should understand how it affects their economy. Because if I say it's bad for your health, they don't understand. Nobody understands health. But economy, that's something people understand here. So the tourism in Northern Thailand is, I think it's, um, it's affected, the effect of bad air quality in Northern Thailand is affecting the economy more than people think. People choose not to come here. And I think it's a powerful message to, um, to people around, you know. It's like, if they want, many people want a better living standard. They want their children in uh, universities and stuff like that. Well, if you get more tourists and they will put more money into the economy, there will be better, higher standard of living. But if you, people s continue to burn, there will be a lower standard of living and there will not be as much money in Northern Thailand as there should be. So, and it's a shame, people don't know what they're doing, they're destroying nature and they're destroying different life and there's like, Thailand is so beautiful. I tell people, Thailand is beautiful and like, people come here, also cyclists, like, Thailand is so beautiful and they just, they don't know what they're doing, they're spraying the fields with chemicals and burning everything, it's just like, Come on, save Thailand with us. Do something good. It would be so great. Everything, people would come and see, wow, this is a nice place to be. Fresh air and chemical free. Like this would be a paradise. Some of the mango trees have amazing flowers and a lot. And our bee friends are still thriving here. 
this natural beehive.